Hello friends and welcome to Liberated Living and the introduction to genetic recoding. We're excited to have you join us on your new venture in this genetic recoding system with our compressed healing programs designed for your personal and professional benefit. We hope you will get the most out of your experience in this module and look forward to having you with us as a part of this Liberated Living journey together. In module one, we will discover how to decode our subconscious blocks and break free from limiting beliefs, overcome generational hardships that lead to our sabotage behaviors. Many of us have learned that we like to be guided to our own answers, and we prefer to be inspired rather than instructed. So it's helpful to know that moving forward, what works for you will most likely also work for your clients. We also value your feedback and on what serves you best because we're committed to your progress. So personal feedback is welcome and valuable to ensure your success. Here is the summary of the seven step panacea acronym that will be your transformational guide throughout this course. P stands for presenting per problem to decode trapped emotions and subconscious blocks. A is for adaptive emotional responses to identify new healthy coping strategies. N is to neutralize emotional scars removing the power of the emotional charge. A, accountability will yield empowerment. C, compassion and empathy helps to heal interrelational dynamics. E, evaluate growth and discover innate gifts and gain gratitude. And the last, alchemize to unlock your soul, purpose and potential. When we miss one or more of these steps, we will continue to repeat the issue again and again. It isn't until we complete each of these steps that we will finally learn to achieve the success we desire with more ease, wisdom, and finesse. Most commonly, we want to escape any of our hurt and pain or feelings of shame and judgment. So appropriate reflection and emotional processing on the reason these events occurred rarely is addressed and we never actually get to the source of the problem, further perpetuating it rather than resolving it. We're here to guide you to your own innate wisdom and unleash your inner wisdom to transform your life for the better, putting you on the path of your purpose and destiny. This course was designed to create this alignment work without turning to outside solutions, but discovering these answers internally, putting the power in your hands. Now, let's talk science. Similar to an instruction manual, our epigenetics read our gene codes like software programming, switching genes on or off. So which functions determine the switch of these biological codes? Like believing your efforts are futile or you don't have the energy you desire, these instruct your mind and it will go to work to signal the belief programs to create that reality. These conditioned responses form our subconscious programming, be it good or bad. Fortunately, we can retrain the brain with an upgraded and customized manual using specific thought signals, such as my hard work is paying off significantly, or I feel more energized every day with new reprograms. But we know it's not necessarily as simple as adopting a new affirmation when it's 80% psychology. Our psychology reigns supreme over our circumstances, not the other way around. And our DNA determines most of our psychology. Each of our DNA defines our uniqueness because it contains the encoded information related to our physical and spiritual lineage and carries our genetic blueprint. For instance, DNA not only determines our genetic predispositions, such as physical structure, but also our belief and behavioral patterns. The good news is that it can also be a blueprint for our highest soul potential. The DNA is both physical and spiritual, being comprised of 12 physical strands and 12 etheric counterparts. The 23rd and 24th strands contain the blueprint for our highest limitless expression when we activate the encoded information in these strands. This is our 90% untapped DNA potential still waiting to be activated. See, this can be fun. This is in essence, sums up the definition of genetic recoding. And I truly believe this is humanity's innate purpose. Genetic recoding covers how to tap into the 90 plus percent of our DNA potential to activate full capacity of our mind power, activating these additional strands rather than function at the minimal 10%. Each thought and each emotion creates a new pattern in your DNA. Our neural networks light up when we adopt new beliefs or continue to reinforce an existing one. For example, I know I can accomplish anything I put my mind to, or I believe I can win this race. 
the emotion corresponding to a belief will fire with specific neurons, creating a pattern and new network association. It is no wonder when we have a specific thought that signals an old program, we experience a pattern or familiar event, such as a food allergy response or frustration from repeatedly ending up in dead end jobs or other setbacks. Which unwanted thought patterns do you have that come to mind? Our prefrontal cortex is the frontal lobe of the brain where we identify our sense of self and define our personal identity, which is anchored by our beliefs. So what beliefs have you formed about yourself? The majority of these were formed prior to the age of seven. You will see evidence of this displayed in your psychological patterns and repeated life situations. Here's an example. To keep it simple, for instance, if you're currently experiencing major financial deficit, then you're on the path of learning the key concepts to master financial success, learning new tools, and so forth. We're meant to focus on ways to strengthen our weaknesses and grow, intellectually speaking, but there are surefire ways to access this potential. To do so, we must first overcome our old narratives and belief paradigms. When we endure such difficulty or repeated difficulty, we're actually developing the strength and inner muscles to overcome these hurdles. However, most often our mind's negativity bias keeps us trapped in the problem, which only strengthens our fight for the problem rather than for the solution. When we view everything in our life that is happening for us and not to us, then we will no longer be at the mercy of life circumstances, but instead can view everything as training for our growth and development. This is an example of another level, another devil. When we're finally ready to surrender and change, that's when we can redirect our focus to the solution and align to our potential with the desired outcome. Being ready is key and the first step. But the good news is all of our challenges are equal to our potential. So take what is most challenging for you and imagine what is equally possible for you. This is when we will begin to see everything fall into place and finally align, feeling better and on the right path. You have to really want it like a burning desire, otherwise you won't believe the payoff is worth the cost. It must be the other way around. Many of you are already aware of this and may still be ready for your own breakthroughs because you have already done what it takes and know you're destined for more in your life, compelling you to keep going. Genetic recoding goes beyond mindful practices and many other therapy techniques using vital exercises and effective solutions that will address the core genetic issue because likely you feel like you're ready for the next level of success in your own life. Your beliefs unconsciously dictate your reality through your thoughts and behaviors that influence your choices and actions, including your emotional reactions. For example, if you have identified with the belief program that you have to work hard to get ahead, then you may never catch a break. So exercise caution of conscious thought and verbal execution if you want to create the ideal conditions and a better reality that you truly deserve, such as I can do less and accomplish more by creating a residual income therefore enjoying more time with my loved ones. Subconscious beliefs are responsible for running your psychological programming, such as money is the root of all evil or creating more money helps me contribute value to humanity. Your consciousness consists of all desires, fears, and motivations, all of which you may not be directly aware. The subconscious mind has a large impact on your decision-making, but unlike the unconscious mind, it can be shaped and trained. Since subconscious thoughts can be accessible to the conscious mind, you can program how it affects your life. Have you ever experienced how difficult it is to implement new habits like healthier eating or exercise? Subconsciously, we hold ourselves back in ways we don't even realize. So until you change your beliefs, you will continue to recycle the same experiences. It's not news to any of us to start at the level of the belief. For instance, if you were like me, then your belief program signaled you to keep working hard to get ahead, and yet you continue to spin your wheels just to feel overwhelmed and defeated. Who did you learn this from, your parents? And how far does the apple fall from the tree? What other beliefs are producing unfavorable results when you know you're worthy of a payoff? Perhaps you feel like a failure when it comes to money, relationships, education, or a fulfilling career. 
Where do you feel ongoing cycles of mediocrity or desire for success? These beliefs are housed in our subconscious aspects and what we're not conscious of. We must retrain our mind from our negativity bias, from all of the ways we believe life has gone wrong, instead of how it's gone right. With that said, do you know the primary difference between the conscious and subconscious mind? The subconscious mind makes up the greater part of your mind and contains our beliefs and memories. It is responsible for all of your involuntary actions, such as your heart rate and your breathing. The conscious mind is the active and alert part of your mind that you're aware of. However, the key difference between the conscious and subconscious mind is that the subconscious gets directions and the conscious follows instructions given by the subconscious mind. So it's best to be clear on those instructions. Conscious intentions and affirmations are done on a conscious level and are always filtered by the subconscious mind because they usually don't match your belief system. With that said, let's address conflicting beliefs. You may consciously want something and subconsciously not believe it's possible, creating conflicting beliefs and dissonance. This is critical for thyroid sufferers, so look at what you're doing and seeing from these programs rather than what your heart genuinely desires. Where are you saying yes to others and no to yourself? This may block communication and the throat chakra from being fully self-expressed, living from obligations instead of from the heart center. Do you have a subconscious program to feel needed? It's just an old pattern ready to be transformed and align you to your own happiness instead of exclusively for others because your needs are important. When we have a desire and a conflicted belief, we set ourselves up for failure because the belief will win every time. For example, wanting more ease in your life yet believing you will only value something if it's challenging. Genetically transferred beliefs and beliefs formed from early childhood, such as social conditioning, are responsible for our core subconscious beliefs. So the majority of the time, our thoughts are expressions from a set of beliefs that were imprinted within your mind from your environment. They are experiences based on subjective personal interpretation. So reflect back and think what significant events occurred for you prior to age seven and perhaps have been on repeat since then. We all know we're byproducts of our parents. However, many of us may not realize that most of the distress we encounter in life was genetically inherited from our parents and their parents. A vast majority of our emotional upsets and psychological triggers were transferred in our DNA from one family line to the next through RNA strands. Is there a correlation in how you may have held similar beliefs as your parents? Have you put your happiness aside for others? For instance, some parents have lived for their children's dreams and happiness and not for their own and so forth. So what areas in your life are you wanting more happiness, fulfillment, and greater outcomes? According to molecular biologists, your genes are shaped in part by your ancestors' life experiences and demonstrates that traits and behaviors acquired in one generation can be passed on to subsequent generations. Neuroscience calls this field of science epigenetics, which studies the interactions of genes with the environment. These findings suggest that the majority of our subconscious blocks, like fears and self-doubt, are in fact genetic. To illustrate, the brain inherits unfinished business transferred from our ascendants, like a parent that wanted to fulfill their passion or dream in life, which perhaps came to a standstill when raising their child. Then perhaps their offspring shared the same passion or dream and chose to fulfill it on a larger scale. On the other hand, some of us may experience some resistance to our parents, even to the extent of overcorrecting. However, this only creates more imbalance and disharmony in our life. No judgment, because many can relate to this until we do our generational healing, where we'll be transmuting these beliefs related to our judgments and fears. In terms of our fears and beliefs, are there illusions and distortions around personal success or financial outcomes? In love or relationships, career or professional pursuits, health or fitness? Reflect on your own generational patterns throughout this course. What do you most want that perhaps you haven't allowed or believed was possible? Our epigenetics or gene expression has a wide influence on both our successes and failures. Many of you may be familiar with this and will continue to explore this more. 